We're so close to creating our first virtual machine, you can almost taste it. But before we get our first VM, we gotta have a place to put it. And when you first install Proxmox, it's gonna ask you where do you want it to be installed? What volume do you want? And if you remember when, when, when I did the installation of Proxmox, I said, I want it on that volume, which in the BIOS or in the RAID controller on the server, I had set up as a RAID one where I mirrored two drives together, right? Proxmox will consume that volume. Like it's, it's done. Matter of fact, take a, take a look right here. I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the interface. I'm clicked on my Proxmox server I'm going to drop down over here to the disks, right? And you can see that it sees one volume right here, and that it is essentially 278.88 gigabits uh, gigabytes of storage that is mapped to this controller, and it is gone. Meaning you can't use that. You can see the usage. It's saying, "Hey, this is 94% consumed." Even though Proxmox, I mean, the install of Proxmox is like one gigabyte in size, right? It actually keeps you from using that storage. So the only way that you're gonna get this is by either A, adding storage to the local server, or B, mapping storage somewhere else. I highly recommend B. The reason why is by doing that, you make it highly available. Let me draw a picture for you. All right, here is the Proxmox server that we just installed, right? Single server, it is 172.20.0.50, right? Now. If we install, or, or I should say add hard drives to this guy and, and, and add local storage to it, you can put VMs on there. And if it's run in a RAID configuration with some decent performing hard drives, they'll perform nicely. The challenge is if that server dies, goes down, power is pulled, all the local storage on there dies as well. We are planning to install a second Proxmox server. Let's just say 172.20.0.51, right? And we'll install Proxmox on there. We're gonna host our servers ideally on a highly available NAS <laughs> or SAN. And that this, this gets into a whole bunch of technology, which I can talk about, but, I, but far beyond where I wanna go right now, right? Um, I, and when I say ideally highly available, I mean, you've got not only a box that has a whole bunch of storage. So this, all this is, is a box that just hosts a bunch of hard drives, right? But then you mirror that box onto a secondary, right? And that's the high availability. If one of these goes down, foop, this one takes over. Now the beauty of hosting that is now you can have your network, here's your switch, right? With all of its switch ports. You've got these guys plugged in in a resilient configuration. You've got these guys plugged in into a resilient configuration. And again, if you're doing this right, you've got multiple switches in a highly available sort of way, right? Like this, this is a, a, a beautiful, <laughs> I'm throwing my pen, a beautiful, highly available looking design right now, right? The beauty of this, there's a whole lot of beauty here, right? is I can set up a VM and store the hard drives here. So let's just say I create my first VM, right? This is, this is my, my VM one, right? Store the hard drives right here, virtual hard drives. This guy now accesses those across the network until poof, he burst into flames because we bought him on eBay and he was sabotaged to explode into flames for, because that's what eBay people do, right? And it goes down. Well, that's the beauty of Proxmox is it can do an instant failover to where this one takes over and continues running VM1, right? This is the idea of clustering, but that is only available if you set up mapped network storage, meaning you're not using the local stores, the local hard drives on the Proxmox server. That's what we're gonna do right here. So let's, let's get back here, I'm gonna clear this off. And I'm gonna bring in my first non-Proxmox device, right? This is actually a, uh, let's, let's go to uh, right there. Um, this is a Synology box. Now, now Synology is just one type of NAS. You can build your own you know, free NAS server. You can use QNAP. I just, I love Synology just because it's what I've always used. It's really familiar and has a ton of features for pretty cheap price. So this is a DS1618 with a 10 gig gigabit per second network card inside of it, right? This is how you create network storage. Watch this. I'm going to go to, um, uh, let's go to, uh, no, not, not there. <laughs> I'm like, it's so simple. Where am I? So, so I'm going to go to the control panel. I'm going to go to the, the shared folder, create one, and we'll call it uh, VM. 
right? This is going to be where my virtual machine storage, it's, it's just to share. I don't need a recycle bin because I'm going to back this up in other backup methods, right? It's going to say, okay, next, do you want to encrypt it? No, I don't want it. That'll just slow it down, right? Self-healing, blah, 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 blah. You know, we can put quotas. All I want is give me a shared folder. It'll be called VM. Goes through and creates it. Now I'm going to jump over. Now this is if I, if I wanted to use, um, user-based permissions, which I don't in this case. I'm going to come over here to NFS. That's a network file system, right? And this is one of the ways, one of the protocols that we can use to, to uh, access the storage. So it's saying, hey, you, you haven't turned on NFS yet. Uh, and that's great. I'll come over here. It's as easy as, and again, this is just a Linux server. Synology is built on Linux like everything else in the world is, right? I'm going to say enable NFS. That's fine. Apply. Okay. The service is now running. Then I'm going to come back to that shared folder. There's my VM, right? I'll slow down a little bit, make sure you're following along, right? I'll double click or actually right click, edit that guy, go back to my NFS permissions. You might need to watch this again. I know I'm moving kind of fast, right? And I'm going to say, okay, I want to create some permissions because by default, NFS is going to deny everything. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say, I want to allow and look at right down here. It says you can specify in three ways. You can just say that server. I can say that domain name. I can say in this case, what I want to do is the entire network. You know, this is a trusted environment. We'll do 172.20.0.0 has read write access to the server. That's great. Okay. Okay. We've now got that created. So, so again, I, I want to make sure you guys follow what I, what I just did. I just went to a Synology box, right? This is that the, the NAS that I drew up, right? It should be redundant and resilient. We can have two of them, that kind of thing. It's just storage. It's all it, I mean, hang on. Can I, can I just show you this? I'm gonna come back here and let's just go to, um, what am I looking for? Uh, the, the, uh, the drives, the drives, the storage manager. There we go. This, this is what it is. If you look, okay, what, what is this guy? Okay, this is just five, three terabyte hard drives, right? And they're all spliced together in one volume that's called Synology Hybrid RAID, which, which is resilient. I can lose any one of those drives. It makes, you know, provides a total capacity of seven terabytes. I've used five, good grief, Jeremy, what are you storing? Um, and two of them are, are still, so I can, I've got two terabytes of storage that I can use for VMs, right? That's, that's all the Synology box is, okay? Back to Proxmox, right? Jump back over there, and I'm gonna jump, uh, jump back to the data center level because now we're talking storage, right? We want the storage to be available for every one of our clusters. So I'm gonna click on Add NFS. Sound familiar, right? Okay, what is the ID? It's essentially, what do you wanna name this? I'll, I'll call it uh, Sino, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, DS1618. Uh, DS, uh, uh, store. Uh, that's fine. I'll know what that is, right? It's a logical name right there. What is the server? It is 172.20.0.250. That's the IP address of my Synology server. And it says, okay, oh, look, what, what, what? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Slow motion. What? It just immediately recognized by typing that in. It's like, hey, there's only one share. Why? Because you just created it, Jeremy. It's called VM. You made it available to NFS and you set the permissions on the Synology device so that it can be accessed from this, right? Oh, okay, great. Okay, now now, now um, Proxmox is like, okay, whoa, 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 wait a second. Tell me what's on there. Is this disk images? Would you have like ISO images on there? And Lotus, this this initially is really confusing. People are like, okay, can you only click one? No, this is like, you know, click as many as you want. Tell, tell me what you want to use that storage for, right? And for now, I'm just going to say disk images and ISO images. That's, that's what I'm going to do, okay? Good. Click on add, bada bing. My friends, we have just made our first off box storage available to Proxmox. That can now be used. I, like, I need like a, a, a theme there, like um, That can now be used to store your virtual machines, to, to mount ISO images, to build your virtual machines. That is awesome. That's all you have to do to get this thing ready. And now we can move on to creating our virtual machine within that storage. <laughs> it's that simple.